Dudley, Ken, Jan, Alex. I'm going to watch some Third Strike and then I'm probably going to play something really casual and boring. I'm probably going to practice some Street Fighter V stuff because I haven't played that game in a little while. I wouldn't mind like just doing some Guile Corner combos. Alright, where's the game start? Ken and Dudley. A classic. If you don't like this matchup, you might as well not watch Third Strike. Dudley's actually not that common. Ooh, that was pretty nice. Low punches can be parried low or high, which makes them somewhat vulnerable as pokes. Nice. Whoa, would that confirm? Most players avoid confirms like that if they can help it. Ken can only confirm into super off of three normals. If he wants to confirm off of two, if he wants to confirm into Shoryuken or anything else, he has to go off two normals. And the confirm off two normals is kind of tight. So it's always really impressive to see combos like that. Shoto players avoid that confirm if they can help it. Cut short, stand jab. All Shotos have it. But it's very, very precise. Oh, we can play if you want to play. Ooh! Staying strong on a crutching opponent is like a 4, four or 5 frame link into a uh, super. Oh, he had another one there. He might have had the car out because he wasn't point blank. Ooh! So run house on an airborne opponent. Uh, slams. I think it does in Street Fighter 4 as well. It didn't used to, but then they patched it. Wow, that trade! Towards roundhouse traded with a sure you can... Towards Roundhouse usually just beats Shoryuken, so he might have done a really late stand run towards Roundhouse. Huh, how awkward. Mmm, that was a really bad Tatsu. And yet it worked. I wonder if Dudley... Some characters... Oro's like this. If the opponent's Tatsuing over your head, um, it doesn't hit you. But if you hit any button, um, Oro's... Hurtbox will rise, and then he will get hit by the Tatsu before the button can come out. So even though you're, like, safe, if you try and hit a button, you get hit. I wonder if something similar happened there. I wonder if Dudley gets taller when he does, like, low strong or something like that. This is a cool matchup. I've seen plenty of show. He's quite good. Ooh. I love that mid screen editor. Oh, the EX tackle for maximum safety. I like the meter build, I guess. Not like he had a whole lot to do there. He probably should have tried to push you on into the corner. This is difficult, but not impossible to win. But, like, he doesn't have a bar, and Jan still has a decent amount of health. Yeah. Basically, if, if Yuri wants to win around like that, he needs to get a nice parry into Crutch Fierce. Because there's no other good way of landing Crutch Fierce. And there's no other good way of getting a comeback without a Crouch Fierce if you don't have any mirrors. Ooh. That was the target combo. Meaty, low, strong. And if they parry, the, the Fierce on reaction to uh, interrupt their, their follow-up. That's kind of clever. I've never seen a use for that target combo before. Low, strong, low, fierce. That's like one that's almost never pulled out. There are a lot of little subtle uses for the target combos in in Street Fighter 3. And in Street Fighter 4, when they ported over the Third Strike characters, they didn't really make a purpose for a lot of them because parries didn't exist and it was hard to make like new purposes. Shoulder comfortably goes under um, EX Mirror. That was pretty clever to use it. I want to say it was clever, but it kind of wasn't because like, that was his go-to juggle anyway. I think there's a decent number of Makotos. I think that if you look at any given character, it seems like there aren't that many of them. But it's just because there's a lot of characters. And not a lot of players. I think the Makoto distribution's okay. I played this matchup a fuck ton. I wouldn't be surprised if I knew as much or more than both of these players about this matchup. I like this. <laughs> no, that was so obvious. That was a cross-up unblockable if he successfully jumped over. Urian had like two things he could have done there. That was nice. He could have done dash forward towards strong and juggled there. 
Not really matchup specific, that's kind of everything. Nice. EX Mirror, very good. <laughs> yeah, the fireball doesn't go uh, through the high mirror. Or is really good at sitting on a life lead in this matchup. Yurian can't efficiently open him up. And Oro can counter poke Yurian pretty comfortably. That was nice, that was good charging. Very nice dash. Yeah, this is really strong against Yurian. I tend to like Super 2. That, no, wait, it's cross-up missed. Why'd it miss? There's some weird thing going on with the hitboxes there. I don't know if he mistimed it or what. Ooh, that was a risky parry. That could have been a jump and stomp. Yeah, very nice roundhouse. You could hit him in time. If you hit Aura, the super doesn't come out. That was a car fireball. I saw that. Saw that fireball. Or I can get a little bit of extra range uh, distancing. There it was. That was the fireball high connect dash in towards strong. Very nice. No, why didn't you get a jumping combo? He could have killed off of that and built more meter. That's pretty nice play. Why low strong of all normals? Yeah, Yurian can't easily prevent that. Or has a lot of good tools in this matchup. It probably is even though. If Yurian attacks, you see how he like dashed in on the the fireball there? Threw a high fireball, Yurian parried it. If Yurian attacks Aura forward dashing, um Aura will actually low profile the hit. Yurian's attacks don't go far far enough down. Yurian will land and recover before his like jump roundhouse will hit Aura. That's some pretty good matchup knowledge. He knew to do that. If Putin parries your fireball, you can safely dash in on them. More threatening the cross up unblockable, but that time you just waited and watched to see if Yurian would try and escape. Yurian can mirror this. Ooh, no. Oh. Shame. It's kind of... Ooh, nice. Very nice. It's kind of okay to get Yurian to mirror a uh, Super 2 back at you. <gasps> Why no jump in combos? Yeah, Yurian should mirror here. Yeah, he knew. Um, Nice. Good hitbox. Oro's supers are less valuable than Yurian's. Oro is a better character than Yurian when supers are not considered. And Oro's super bar is a little bit shorter than Yurian's. So if Oro can burn one super to get Yurian to burn one super, it's a good deal. Which is why Oro's will throw like the super against a cornered Yurian. And Yurian has to... Um, Yurian has to... Uh, I shouldn't say he has to burn super, but super is a reliable way out of the corner unblockable. And if he gets trapped between Oro doing a cross-up and that super in the corner, then it's it just opens him up and then Oro gets the infinite from that. So you have to avoid that, either by jumping or, like, parrying the super or, you know, knee drop. It's just some way to get out of the corner. And the only truly safe way is to throw an EX mirror out and bounce the super back. So it's the best. It's usually the best outcome for Yurian, and it's also usually the best outcome for Oro. Or it's not the best, but, like, it's still worth it. Even even if Yurian does the safest thing, it's still worth it for Oro to throw that super. That was a good anti-air. Yurian's anti-air is a really good... Who's going to really jump in expecting a three-hit parry on Yurian? No one. Ugh! I think he thought that that wasn't going to hit him. The fuck was that? Note that Yurian has a really hard time doing anything from a far parry. That was a reversal headbutt. Reversal headbutt's airborne frame one. So the stand fierce actually air, air reset him instead of recoiling him. So the Tatsu whiffed. He thought he was going, he was trying to bait like a, a super or something, I don't know. Nice. Oh, never mind. It was just cut short. You're frozen in place when you're parried, but um, um, you can still cancel moves and chains counts as a cancel. So if you have a low short parried, you can do another low short. Really? No, I thought you, yeah, I was like, you need to, oh, uh, that's a shame. Uh, you're, Ken can do, wow, hold on, there's a lot of shit happening. This is a crazy game. Hold on, I like saw too much too fast. That's really cool that he went for that forward dash. If you get very particular connects of EX Tatsu, 
Okay, so Yurian right there goes for Stand Strong at the X uh, headbutt. Crouch Fierce is pretty slow, and it either doesn't punish there, or it's like a just frame punish there, because Ken's uh, Super 3 is really safe. It's like only minus like like 7 or 8 or something like that. Um, so, like, Yurian's Crouch Fierce is pretty slow, and that's what he wants to land, and that's his main launcher, but he does have another launcher for things that are hard to punish with Crouch Fierce, and it's uh, EX Headbutt. But EX Headbutt's pretty slow, but you can cancel it from Stand Strong, but in order to cancel it from Stand Strong, you need to have, have Down Charge and then do, like, a standing move into a Flash Kick motion, into a Buffalo Headbutt motion. So, um, he was holding down, and then he tried to release down, hit Stand Strong, and then do up and punches, uh, but he got the up and punches too early. Or he might have gotten the Stand Strong Kara, EX Headbutt. Anyway, there Ken does EX Tatsu, and he has a good angle that gets a high connect, so he actually tries to do forward dash in into uppercut, and that lets you get a double uppercut if you can do the Kara uppercut. Um, but against a lot of, in a lot of scenarios, you don't have time for that dash, but in that scenario, I think he did, but he just missed it. That was a lot of really crazy, like, like, good, good decisions that didn't quite play out in a very short amount of time. He got a far strong there, he could have linked the super. He had the meter. Far strong is a super confirmed for Ken. You can do far strong and then buffer super and every single time. You see the far strong connect, you can react. It's not that difficult. Where's that Q player? I want to see some cool Q action. I guess that one was already complete. So now we're watching one that wasn't complete. We're watching the rest of it. Yan versus Ken. This matchup has been explored a lot. The general consensus is 5-5. Five five. It's pretty fair. Ken's damage output makes up for his uh, the fact that he does slightly worse than footsies. Ken does a lot more damage than Yan does. Off of like normal connects. Universal overhead was kind of a cool mechanic. Why didn't that hit? It's a very unusual overhead. There's nothing. Most overheads operate nothing like the universal overhead. Universal overhead comes out insanely quickly for an overhead, and it does insanely low damage, and it's insanely unsafe. And also, they hop, so you dodge lows. Which is quite useful, I've got to, got to admit. Certain characters benefit more from it than others. Particularly characters without good overheads use it a lot. I use it a fuck ton. Or benefits quite a lot from it, in my opinion. I was a bit early on the backing. Telegraphed it a bit. Yo, that was nice. Mmm, mmm. Lilo strong of all things. Of course he's going to be waking up with a parry. See that health? The fuck was he trying to hit? Should have kept it close and mixed it up between meaty close strong, meaty throw, or uh, meaty low short. That was the way to win, I feel like. Make it two-thirds chance of winning. Alright. This I don't this might be able to kill. Yeah. That was a very good ender. You almost never see that one. That was like good knowledge. I wonder why you don't see that one more often. Maybe it's a salvage ender. For like when you don't have time for a ender that builds more meter or something like that. I had some Yurian, Yurian Ken. Let's see it. Yurian needs to come back. They need to add him to Street Fighter V. That'd be cool if they decided to add Yurian to Street Fighter V. Maybe they could announce him. They could be like, hey, here's some characters that we're bringing back for Street Fighter V. One of them is Yurian. Ooh. 
Parrying is indeed very hard to balance. They did a decent job with this game. Parrying fundamentally is a universal mechanic. So, um, you don't have to look at who gets parry and who doesn't in this game. But instead you have to look at who benefits, like who, which characters get shot down by parries and which ones don't. Parry into throw is a lot safer than parry into crutch fierce. I actually knew that Urian was confirmed. I have but. There aren't that many like days left for a new character to come out, you know what I mean? If they're going to bring out a character in May, there's not much May. We're like nearly, nearly done with May. Two stand jabs. Despite its appearance, stand jab can actually be paired high or low. I think he was trying to anti-air with it. He just hit it kind of late because he didn't know us parry. Close jab is the one you want to anti-air with with Ken. Yurian is not confirmed to be the next character. We have no idea who the next character is. There's talk of Ibuki, there's talk of uh, Balrog. I don't know why it's between those two, but I know it is. Nice. Mmm, that, that was a good block. It was really, really meaty, so he had a lot of time to confirm it. He had, he had extra time to block, to react to it, to block. But it was also really, really meaty, so if he got hit by it, uh, it would have confirmed a super. Like, comfortably. Kens don't really use that that much. Oh, this is like kill. I think it would have been smarter to throw him. Honestly. That shit is really hard to live through. If you do like an overhead or a load, there's a chance that they're just going to parry like crazy and make it out. But if you throw them, no one's ready for parry a couple hits and then take a throw and then parry during the throw tech or whatever. I don't even know if you can parry when breaking out of a throw. I don't know how that works. If you get thrown during like a like a parry during like a meaty fireball. It seems like the fireball always immediately hits after the throw break. I don't know if it's blockable, I don't know if it's variable. Two cans. No one has meter, so there's a lot of just like spacing and being careful. No hit carries that much risk yet. so you can afford to do some stuff you wouldn't be able to do later on. Could have confirmed that's a super. Oh, that could have been low forward super. Or at least low strong super. Nice, good confirm. The main scary buttons that Ken has are far strong, low strong, his overheads. I guess like his target combo and stuff. Anything that can confirm it to super quite comfortably. Low short. That's why you can doesn't build meter or anything. You have to get to the active frames for it to build meter. It's just for style. Ooh. Ellie actually does have parries. Just frame guarding and whatever. Mm, that could have been a heck of a parry. Dark combo is quite safe in this game. Very nice. 
That she can still around, I think. Yeah, one frame parry is a huge difference from like a seven frame parry. The biggest thing about third strike parries is that they're very like the window to hit them is pretty big. It's just that there's a huge risk associated with which direction you parry. And even though the window is big, you know, there's what the fuck is that mirror? Did he mean to do that? What the hell? Was that a reset? I've never seen that one. It looked intentional. I think low forward into light shoulder combos on a crouching opponent, but not standing ones. That was cool. That combo doesn't work on everyone. I think it might be optimal for your area. Hmm. This hurts. That's a very bad starter to eat. It's one of the worst ones. That really fucked him up. Let's look at the damage of that combo. Holy shit, he's eating everything this round. There. I've got my mouse on the fucking where his health bar ends. Yurian has quite a lot of health, and that did straight up half his health bar. That was a lot. That is a really, that was a really painful starter to eat. Twelve player Yamazaki, perhaps. There's a twelve player named Yama and another twelve player named Yamazaki. They're both extremely good. Yamazaki's the the more well known one. Yamazaki is a very good twelve. Yamazaki, I'm pretty sure, means like Mountain Point or something like that. It's a geographical name. The family, it's a family name. So, like, probably people who came from like a Mountain Point would have a name like that. A lot of family names in Japan are where you came from. It's kind of neat that that like ancient language is still pretty much exactly the same. You can still just discern the meanings of names. Ooh, very nice. That was really cool. Show is very good, isn't he? Jesus. The range he's standing at is so good because even if he gets parried, he's not vulnerable of crouch fears. Like even though he's still pushing a decent mix-up for how far away he is. And he's getting like these not quite frame traps. This old? It's kind of recent. It's 2015. That's quite recent in the grand spectrum of this game. What what did he do that made that save? That looked like just a gambit, just a guess. Yeah, I could take a look at your Street Fighter Five gameplay. Oh, I love that. Whiffing, alternating whiffing short and strong in Ganagian and repeatedly cancelling them into each other will actually rapidly move you forward. It looks really funny. It's like a, it's like constant approach, but also there's constantly a hitbox in front of you. So it's way safer than like dashing in or walking forward. I have no idea about show. Oh no, that was a punish, I think. Kurodsky appears. You have the target combo. 
Nice parry. He didn't really need to do that. The mirror was pushing him in, into the corner. Hmm, even though you, like, missed a space. Oh, that was supposed to be a cross-up, I think. That's super precise to time. Because if... Hold on. Let me look at that. That's, like, a really crazy trick. I can't believe he went for it. So you get that that dive kick. If you time that dive kick correctly, if you time it, if you do it too early, then you'll land and land on the other end of him without hitting him midair. And that's what happened here. He did it too early. And if you do it too late, your aim will stand, and you won't be able to go through him. It'll just hit on the front because he'll get in the way. He'll get in the way of the hitbox. But if you do it just right. Yun will go through Yurian, and then Yurian will stand up into the hitbox, and it will hit like a cross-up. And it's like a really, based on that, because it can hit on the front or the back with only a few frames timing, it's a really tricky block. You almost never see it, though. Ooh, Stammerin Huss moves your hip, uh, her box back. Grab box, I suppose. Everything. It moves all of you back. Oh, no. Okay, it was a reset. It was accidental for sure. But he's still really dangerous in Gene. Ghost medium kick into super jump carries the risk that you're going to dive kick into them at some point during the jump. So it's a little hard to anti-air because if you want to anti-air, you could eat a dive kick. And also the anti the dive kick is pretty easy to anti-air, but if you're waiting for the dive kick, you might you just might not do one. Good jump. Oh no, it's fine. That was a good trade. It was like worth dash punching to bounce off of that. Nice parry. Even with that double parry, he didn't get any reward. Like he could have done jump fierce if he wanted to. That would have done more than his jump jab that he did. But like he couldn't get anything worse than a jump fierce. Stand Fierce. That was probably on a low parry because Yurian was crouching and not blocking. And Yurian has no meaningful reversal. I'm sure he had a juggle there. Yeah, those instant airborne attacks are not very good. They're good at getting out of stuff, but they're not good at getting out of juggles. Looks like that guy won. Show. Where's the... 